Patinisters, can I make this vintage knitting pattern fit me? Like many vintage knitting patterns, this was written for a 34 to 35 inch chest only, and I'm most certainly not that recommended size. And the other jeopardy is I want to knit this in cotton rather than the wool it was designed for. Am I crazy? Stay tuned to see how it turns out, if it turns out. Now, the two most common reasons why people often don't use vintage knitting patterns are one, like this, it's just not in the size, so you don't know how to make it fit. How do I substitute yarn that is long since discontinued? So majestic wool, um, certainly no longer around. Now, both are understandably annoying and may seem an unsurmountable barrier to a starting, especially if you're new to knitting. However, you don't need to be intimidated if you understand gauge and some maths, or math for the American pattern Easters out there. I don't know why you drop the S, or maybe why we add it. Anyway, please don't take this as a way of forgiving modern pattern designers for not being size inclusive, but I certainly do see no reason why anyone shouldn't be able to enjoy some of this vintage styling and inspiration if that's what they wish to knit. So let's see if I can try and help out with some ideas and an approach that I use to see if that can help. Now, does your brain just tell you to give up before you've even started and find a vintage pattern that's written in your size? Well, let's see. Now, occasionally you do find a pattern from the 1940s or around that period with a larger size, but they are rare and they're often matronly. Let me show you one. I think they assumed that was the clientele. This is the twin set for fuller figures. Now, there are obviously some younger um, people in here. That was a cozy for cold days. Again, they talk about them being so slimming, assuming that's what you want to be, but putting that aside, let's just say they're not always the most exciting design wise. So although they are out there, sometimes we still want to knit what we want to knit, don't we? So if you can't find something in the larger size, be brave and go for that pattern that you do like. So for this pattern, we have the two most common reasons why people don't use knitting patterns as challenges. Hey ho, some vintage patterns do state that there were three ply or DK, but this just pattern didn't, unfortunately. So how are we going to know what weight of wool it was? Is it beginning to seem like an impossible task? Well, let's hope not. There are a few other reasons why knitters are often put off using vintage patterns. Can anyone guess those reasons? Stay tuned to see if the one of the reasons you have for being put off using these vintage knitting patterns is solved here too. So let's see if I can give you a helping hand to knit a vintage piece by talking you through my approach. Now, by no means this is the best, the only, the correct, but let's hopefully see if we can inspire you and give you a start with some pointers to see if you can get going. And certainly if you've got any other questions that I've forgotten to put in the video, please let me know in the comments box and we'll see if we can help each other out. I know the community's got lots of experience. Hopefully some of these patterns, uh, tips of course, you can take into modern patterns as well as vintage ones or help design your own pattern. Knitting mass is not that scary when you understand what you're trying to solve for. So, first things first. We need to know our measurements before we try to fit anything to ourselves. Now, the relevant ones anyway for the pattern you want to make. Be brave, get that measuring tape out and start measuring. Because do you just measure your full bust across the top? Now, for obvious reasons, I'm not going to put all my measurements on YouTube, but let's get measuring because I certainly measure bust size, both the upper, the mid, the under bust, hip waist, waist, me waist measurements, shoulder width. I have quite narrow shoulders, um, underarm to sort of waist because I don't like them being cropped, but take it to your waist as well. Arm length with the bicep, 
and of course write those measurements down and then we'll decide about ease or tightness that you want to measure in a minute. So get that measuring tape out and start to measure. So once we know what measurements we have, let's take a quick look at the pattern because if there's any particular stitch patterns in here like ribbing, lace, cables, you might have to cast on multiples to knit that pattern. And that of course will change the number of stitches required. So as I said, my goal is to knit this Sirdar pattern number 782. And it says it's a short or long sleeved ladies jumper in stocking stitch. So at least it doesn't have a difficult stitch pattern to have to work with into the resizing. So number three is yarn assessment. Now you can see on the front it says it's a majestic wool. Yes, it's written in quotes, parentheses, not sure why. And the original colours were, although well, not very obvious, the main colour was blue and the contrast was red. And as an aside, this was priced at 3D or threepence. Um, and I suspect it's in late 1930s, maybe into 1940s. It's certainly a bigger print pattern. Um, so it hadn't got to the paper rationing during World War II, um, but it could be early 1940s. And it certainly does talk about shoulder pad, tailored shoulder pads, which can be purchased at any larger store, often greatly improve the appearance of knitting garments. Now you can tell for myself, they certainly do, but let's see what happens when I've knit this up, whether I need to put some uh, shoulder pads in back to the yarn so let's read all of the key information next to consider the way forward for selecting that yarn or at least for a substitute so for the longer sleeved it needs seven ounces of the blue and one ounce of the red wool for a short sleeve it was five ounces of the blue and one ounce of the red so quite useful to know the amounts now sometimes you can get lucky yarn sub or ravelry sometimes gives you some clues as to some of the later patterns and um, but actually the sadar patterns were produced in two ply three ply four ply with dk later as there's really no clue in this pattern as to what weight of wool was expected or yardage we're gonna have to turn a bit detective if we haven't already. Now you can normally judge by needle size, tension details combined. So let's hope given that the stitch on this looks like it's a fairly even stocking stitch that there's nothing weird in terms of loose tension etc. So tension it stated is six stitches equal to one inch um, and the knitting needles is a pair of number 12 and a pair of number eight. Again they're using straight needles not circular which is my personal preference. So what is a knitting needle number 12 and number 8? These will of course be UK sizes. It says number 12, which believe it or not is a US size 2 or a millimetre 2.75 millimetre for the uh, ribbing, quite tight. And a number 8 is a 4 millimetre or US size 6. So actually quite a drastic change between the ribbing uh, tension and the main stockinette. They really did want you to cinch in that waist. So as I said, that six stitches to one inch is normally now rewritten to being per four inches or by 10 centimeters, because it's more accurate if you've got the number of stitches. That six by four, I think it's about 24 stitches per four inches. So after all that research and a bit of maths, it would suggest that this was actually written for four ply yarn, which is not surprising given it was one of the majestic yarn sizes. However, I want to knit this using a DK yarn that I have in my stock. So how do I adjust this? I'm getting about five stitches rather than six per um, my tension swatch. Now I know, as I said, I'm a loose knitter, so that's uh, only about 20 stitches per four inch. So we're going to have to calculate that in to the number of that going to need to cast on and then adjust as we work up. Oh well, 
I'm never very good at getting tension, as was written, so I often have to adjust it. I'm, I think, quite a loose knitter. I feel like I'm quite relaxed when I'm knitting. So, the complication is I don't want to knit this in wool. I want this to be a summer feel, so I want it to be in cotton. Now, as you know, wool has a spring and a stretch to it, whilst cotton doesn't. So the negative ease uh, that I suspect this pattern is written in is not going to work in cotton like it does in wool. But anyway, my preference would be generally to turn it from negative to a slightly positive ease over my buff. In terms of the cottons that I'm going to use, it's actually this vintage cotton from Hayfield and it was Raw Cotton Classics DK um, and we've got a beige and a cream, so very light contrast um, stripe going on here. These are 50 gram balls, these are also discontinued by the way, so they are actually gorgeous cotton both to knit with and uh, to have on lovely soft feeling doesn't dry your hands out or tug um so these are from a stash these are i think they're probably from the 80s um maybe the 90s um by which time actually hayfield i think was already taken over by sadar so slightly ironic that i'm using a vintage cotton to replace my uh, discontinued wool yarn from sadar now this cotton is, it says on the ball band, to be knit using four millimeters, that was a size eight UK or a US size five, with 22 stitches um, across a 10 by 10 with 28 rows. So, um, and then the yardage is 121 yards for that 50 grams and 110.6 meters per 50 so very precise so that's what i'm starting to use to try and de-stash and hopefully be a bit more summery and i'm certainly going to try and go for the short sleeve so i should have plenty of this in my stash um to replace that wool but does this gonna work am i gonna have to do more adjustments let's find out Given that you're wanting to knit this to fit you um, and to be something that you want to wear, why don't you assess the pattern for any particular adaptations that you want? Now, I'm a lady of a certain age, as you can tell, and something this tight around my waist is no longer very flattering. So I prefer to change this rib to a folded hem. But otherwise, generally, I want to keep the feel of the pattern as close as possible. But this, I think, is knit with a very tight negative ease. And as I said, cotton is not going to work for that particularly. Now, even though I may be quite wide across the bust, I actually have quite narrow shoulders. So again, it's something I'm going to need to assess. So we'll have to do some extra decreases if I'm going to work from the bottom up as this is. So let's read the pattern. So it has... If we're going to assess, it's going to read, as said, it's going to knit from the bottom up. It's doing back, front, short sleeves or the long sleeves, and then the collar. And then you make it up in pieces. So, in terms of other bits to note, it has, uh, let's see, it's every tenth row, it's switching from the main colour to the contrast colour. So every tenth row, it's going to be red which gives you quite a wide stripe. And I actually think I'm gonna prefer something that's a bit more narrow. So I think I'm gonna go with every five rows. Nothing else, I'm sure like you, me, that keeps you knitting to the next uh, change of color week. So a train journey for work was the perfect time to cast on a sleeve. Looking at the pattern, it had 72 stitches to cast on, which, when you do the maths, gives you about 12 inches round the bicep. So given I wanted some positive ease, I did the five times the 16 inches I wanted, which gave me 80 stitches to cast on. One train journey later, I had a very nice short sleeve. So I thought I'd jump in here just to talk through the short sleeve. Now, 
lots of people of course say that you can't try things on when you knit bottom up which I dispute slightly because I think you still can because you're in control you can decide what you do but anyway let's talk about this so again I have knit it in the round at least for as far as I can go and because this is a short sleeve this will sit underarm so there wasn't a huge amount but that's a joy no it's big sleeve island but yes lots of ends to weave in that is the disadvantage with a single stripe but I have to say I do quite like that single stripe so what I decided was the pattern does tell you this distance between the underarm um, and the length basically so you can measure this is maybe not a very good example because this is oversized but you can measure where it's going to sit because you know where it will sit under arm so if you measure the distance from your underarm you'll know where it's going to sit on your bicep so I was able to measure around here to work out roughly what I wanted now again I didn't want it to be too tight it will be uh, look slightly better and it's not sitting over something but so I was able to work out how much I would cast on but as you can see I need a bit of extra space up here than most patterns so whilst as I got to just before the underarm which is where my bicep starts to bulge I've added in some increases which the pattern does not allow for it was just supposed to be straight up um, but I certainly needed it and it was once every what did I do in the end uh, one two three four five six seven eight so every eighth stitch across that round I did an increase and that was actually sufficient now you can see at the very top because it's having to come in I do end up obviously having far more stitches than the pattern expects at the top to cast off so I did do a rapid knit two together in that almost last row and then cast off together but it will require me to do quite a little bit of a puff as it comes up the top which I love so it's not a bad thing so that was my thinking around how I knit my little puff short sleeve so for the main body I chose to knit in the round rather than a front and back as per the pattern at least until the underarm anyway and with a folded hem modification to the pattern that we talked about at the bottom I then chose to go straight up with no increases unlike the pattern I'll then sew the folded hem as it's curling at the moment too then I continued for 13 and a half inches before splitting for the sleeves um, and many patterns tell you to split with an even number of stitches in front and back but that doesn't work for my fit so I marked off what I needed for the back which was 21 inches so that's 21 times the 5 stitches per inch uh, or 105 stitches and then cast off for the underarm leaving the front on the hold I then continued up the back shaping as per the pattern for the six and a half inches and then I started shaping the shoulders. So picking up the front I did some decreases and started the button placket. Yes this is an extra flap of fabric that will sit behind the buttonholes and I added some velvet ribbon to the back of the placket once it was finished to help stabilize it and this helps the buttons sit properly. You'll then knit the buttonhole side, which will be finished off by a crochet edging. After another train journey, a collar and another sleeve were finished. And then it was just the seaming and all those ends to finish off. And then we can try and set this into the top. Again, what I've done is I've turned this all inside out. Now I've still kept quite a lot of the ends on here because I was going to try and weave some of these in as I went through and attach them to the stitch to make it all a bit stronger but what I've done is placed, ooh, let's not lose the darning needle, 
place the right sides together. So that means the sleeve goes into the inside of the top. Now, again, I've used like needles that I use for sewing. Um, and what I've tried to do in this, because you'll see, if we look back to the original pattern, it was actually quite neat where they had all of the rows from the top matching the rows on the sleeve which does mean you end up with all of the extra puff at the top. So I've tried to go through, let me see if I can flip it around briefly, and try to match up where all of those rows will come together so that I can then stitch them up. And then what happens is, as I said, I'm gonna have quite a lot of the top sleeve that's got more stitches in it than the actual shoulder that we've sewn together. So I'm going to have to pull those together and create little tucks um, to effectively give me my little puff sleeved effect right at the very top that sits there. So I'm going to not make you sit here and walk through me actually stitching this all together and tucking these ends in. And maybe we're a bit closer, who knows? Do we think we've done it? Do you think it's gonna fit? Is it even gonna look good because it's in cotton rather than wool? Stay tuned, let's find out. And for you, it's gonna be a second. For me, it's ends and sewing. I do quite like the sewing, the ends bit, maybe not so much, especially in cotton as they need to be knotted, otherwise they end up going wherever. They don't, they don't deal as well as wool, anyway said I'll be back when I'm done. On the first try on I realised despite all the shaping the shoulders were still too wide which is mostly driven by the back I think being too wide so I took off the collar and added a box pleat at the back of the neck before reattaching the collar again. So you don't necessarily have to rip everything out. But then we are ready for the final reveal. What do you think of the finished knit after all this? I love the sleeves and the fit over the body. It's so soft and cool. The slightly looser gauge I'm sure will stretch over time and I'll have to see how much it pills. But overall, I'm pretty happy with the fit and finished item. What do you think? I have finished the Scottish Shrug Cal Knit Along that's been coasted by Amy Palco of The Meaningful Stitch and Jackie from Carry Jack's Knits. Now I have, as you'll have noticed, Tweak the pattern slightly, as I often do, uh, just to pull it away from my neck. This is a uh, fairly rustic yarn, but it's still actually quite soft. It hasn't yet been blocked, so I'm hoping it softens up even further. But um, it is from Blacker Yarns. Not sure I'll put a post in the right way around. But this is their Folklore DK, 100% British wool, non-superwash. It's a mix of grey Shetland, uh, cream English Merino, and then light grey North Ronaldsey. And we've got three different colours here. Not sure if the light's going to show it off, but don't you think this looks like a gorgeous uh, ice cream from the past? Neapolitan ice creams where you had the three colourways, your chocolate, your raspberry and your vanilla. Uh, that's what it reminds me of. But we have, what are the colourways? We have Lady's Lantern as this darkest one. We have Cliff Pinks, which is the pinkish one. And then the natural one is undyed and it's called Lover's Cove. But yes, isn't it gorgeous? This is the Friday Shrug um, knit with DK. So I didn't blend two fingerings. This is actually a DK wool already. And I just thought I shouted to use up these three different colourways. Ready for the Scottish Festival of Yarn. Scottish Yarn Festival. Sorry, Eva, I can never remember which way round it is now since we've changed the name from Perth. But A few of you have commented in previous videos you'd like to see what else I knit. 
Um, so here's another one of the uh, shawls that I've knit up recently. It's knit and crocheted, in fact, and it's in a sport weight yarn um, from Bow Fiddle Yarns. Now, Louise will have a massive stall at the Scottish Yarn Festival. So, yeah, another reason to come along to. And this is her kneeled colourway. Isn't it a gorgeous colour to match with denim? I just love it. Now, the shawl is my own design and I love to mix crochet and knit into the same project. So you can see there there's a crochet insert for the middle um, and there's a crochet edging, but the majority of it is a knit uh, project. Does anyone else do that? They mix their knitting and crochet projects together. I love sampling some new stitches, of course, in shawls, and it's an easy way to try things out before you have to put them into a, another project. And who else thinks the cable stitch looks a bit like farfarilla pasta? I really love this, and I'm sure it's going to get lots of use, uh, both with denim and probably with work items as well. So yeah, I thought I'd give you a little show as to some of the other projects I've been finishing this summer. Now, if you remember at the start, I said there were two main reasons people didn't knit vintage patterns. But did you guess what some of the other reasons may be? Well, of course, as we've seen, some of them were written with outdated needle sizes that we just don't understand. They can be knitted with straight needles versus circular, some of the terms, methodology, things like the bottom up rather than the round or top down. Um, of course, availability, just that the wool was too fine. Who wants to be knitting their life away with lace weight? Although I know there's some of you out there that love it. Um, and of course, the style might not be your thing. But anyway, I'd love to hear if you found this useful and if it gives you the confidence to have a go. At least get started. After all, it's only yarn. What do you have to lose? Maybe a few hours of knitting. But that can be frogged and you can have enjoyed it whilst you go through the process. So anyway, stay safe, stay healthy, happy knitting. <laughs>